I was just so hard on myself, you know, I was never good enough, nothing was ever good enough and then I was unhappy and then I felt guilty because I had all of my dreams were coming true, being a Spice Girl, you know, being successful. <laughs> Hello, babe. How are you? Oh, my... Do you know what? I am all the better for seeing your lovely face. <laughs> well, babe, first things first. Happy birthday to you and the Spice Girls. 25 years. I still wake up most days. You know, sometimes when we wake up, we feel a bit... Ugh, don't we? Do you know what I mean? I often feel a bit, a bit gross in the mornings. But I often think... I'm a Spice Girl, <laughs> you know, and I still, <laughs> and I still pinch myself because everything that happened from the 90s through to today. I think a lot of people may have seen the recent Channel 4 documentary and I was watching that back and you see these newspaper headlines and you see this kind of like wall of sexism that came up against you because you were independent women with your own voices, taking control of your own narrative. What kind of sexism really frustrated you that you came up against and what really shocked you and what was really difficult to comprehend at that time? When you look back to the 90s, the language that was used, I, I, you know, it was just disgusting the way that they treated women and, you know, it still is, it still is. It has improved, but not enough. I think for us, it was quite shocking because we were just so ambitious. Yeah, when we were told, oh, you know, girl bands, they don't really sell records, you know. Teenage girls buy records, so they want boys, you know. They want to marry the guy in the boy band or whatever. And we were just like, what? <laughs> that's not how we feel. Surely if that's not how we feel, there must be other people who feel that way. You know, so we wanted to go out there. We wanted to prove people wrong. And, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of grateful for those short-sighted, narrow-minded people because it gave us our mission. When you become a solo artist for the first time, you know, you chopped your hair off and then all of a sudden everyone was like, oh, question your sexuality, which is a whole other mm. level of sexism as well. How difficult was that for you to wrap your head around? That made me really, really angry because I just thought, you know, how dare you assume and, and put labels on people? I worked with Sink the Pink, as you know, I did a fantastic tour. It was my first time working with drag queens and um, non-binary people that closely, you know? So that was that was so enlightening for me to meet people where I kind of, so I get emotional again when I talk about this, when I saw people's I don't, right, I'm in LA. I might sound like I'm a bit out there, but <laughs> when you just get down to it and you get to know people, you see beyond the shell and everything. It's just that human, isn't it? And I think that is, that's such a beautiful thing. Do you wish you were kind of afforded that same respect when you were going out on your own? Do you know what? I really do, because that was the hardest time in my life. I obviously was coming out of the crazy days with the Spice Girls. I was launching out on a solo career and I was having some personal issues. I'd been very open about mental health issues I was having, about eating disorders I was battling. And the newspapers, the tabloid newspapers, were making fun of me. You know, even when I'd admitted those things. And at that time, not many people were talking about depression or eating no. disorders. You know, it was it was something that wasn't spoken about as openly as, as it is now. And thank goodness it is now. And we need to continue to do so because it can be so isolating and make you feel so alone. Mm. How have you learned to look after yourself as you've gone through your life? And what would you say have been some really key turning points in you being able to look after your own mental health and have a better relationship with yourself and know yourself so well that you don't let that kind of stuff get to you. You know, personally for me, sadly, I had to experience real lows. You know, I had quite severe depression, um, anxiety, panic attacks, which is something I do occasionally still suffer from. 
And I just had to learn to be kind to myself. I was just so hard on myself, you know, I was never good enough. Nothing was ever good enough. And then I was unhappy and then I felt guilty because I had all of my dreams were coming true, being a Spice Girl, you know, being successful, earning lots of money and traveling the world and doing all these things, but it still didn't fulfill me. So that made me feel even worse about myself, you know? So it's this battle. And I just had to had to learn to to just appreciate who I am and I think we you know so many of us we strive to be something where at the end of the day you know we are enough do you think given everything that you've achieved and I mean you've achieved so much stuff in the group outside the group personally as well do you think that is the ultimate success for you realizing that in a way yeah yeah, it's kind of going, you know, with anything in your life. Because, of course, you know, I've had lots of disappointments as well. And I find it's like, it's the human condition. We dwell on the disappointment, don't we? We dwell on the failure. Yeah. Yeah. When I do really well, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. But then when I don't do well, I'm like, ah, you know, it's like, come on now. And just, you know, I, I try to speak to myself the way I would speak to other people. You know, somebody you love. You know, because we really should love ourselves above anybody else because we can't offer that love to other people if we haven't got it for ourselves, right? So, but it's it's a challenge, you know, it really is. 1000%. Is there a no or like a sort of down period that you look back on now that almost has empowered you in a way? I, I look back to those darkest days and for me, it was kind of around the millennium. You know, that was when I was really just taking the first steps towards recovery with my depression and my eating issues. I've never thought about ending my life, but I have had times when I've thought, maybe if I wasn't here, you know, maybe if I didn't wake up, it would be easier. Anything that is thrown at me now, I just think, you know what, I got through that, I can get through this. And I think we are so much stronger than we realize, even in our weakness. You know, I'm a very emotional person, I cry, all the time but I'm tough <laughs> mm. and I think as well like you've just like you've become friends with Billie Eilish who's your certified number two fan after me babe let's get real <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and like do you feel that you want to build relationships with younger female artists like Billie for instance in order to kind of like help them through kind of what they're going through that you've gone through as well I mean, meeting Billy was so brilliant because I went to Shepherd's Bush Empire, she played there. So, you know, I was lucky enough to meet her and I always do that thing and I feel like, all right, shut up, Gran. You know, I'm, I'm going, oh, you know, make sure you enjoy it because it goes so quickly and da -da -da -da. I'm thinking she's going to think, yeah, whatever. And then she talked about it in an interview. <laughs> you know, because the thing is, I feel so lucky that I was in a band, that I am in a band, because we have each other. We all experience the same thing. Even though we experienced it and dealt with it in different ways, we know. We know, you know? And I think when you're a solo artist, it's hard. I think that's so amazing you've been able to build that kind of relationship. And, like, does that mean you're going to be on stage at Glastonbury, babe, is what I want to know. Well, wouldn't that be lovely? <laughs> It is discussed, you know, it makes me laugh because all these things are written about, I, you know, and then someone said to me, oh, no, 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 one of the girls, I can't even remember who it was, has said you've been asked and it's like, well, I've never been asked. So I don't know what's going on there. I, I, I don't think we've been asked, in all honesty, we haven't been asked to do it, but I do believe it could be the thing that would see all five girls on stage. <laughs> so... So we, we best, should we start a petition? 